Master any English vowel sound in 60 seconds or less using the two simpler techniques you're about to discover in this video. Hi, it's Michael from the British Accent Method. And if you're a non-native English speaker who finds certain English vowel sounds confusing and similar, like feet and fit, cart and cut, or set and sat, then you're in the right place. Because in this video, I'm going to give you two very simple techniques that you can quickly and easily apply to any vowel sound you find confusing in English to clearly pronounce it so you stop getting asked to repeat yourself and feel confident when you speak. At the end of this video, I'm also going to give you access to my vowel sound checklist, which is a five point checklist that you can apply to any vowel sound in English. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Michael Roberts and I run the British Accent Method English Pronunciation Coaching Program, which enables non-native English speaking professionals to quickly and effectively improve their English pronunciation so that they speak English clearly without getting asked to repeat themselves and get the career development opportunities that they should be able to, but they might currently be missing out on because of their pronunciation in English. Both of the two techniques you're about to discover, I created four students in my coaching program, but I wanted to give them to you two here today so that if you're finding English vowel sounds confusing, then you can put an end to that and speak English clearly. Let's dive in. The first technique is what I call the finger technique, and you can use the finger technique to immediately identify how far open your mouth should be for any of the vowel sounds in English. When most people learn pronunciation, they get told that for certain vowel sounds, their mouth should be semi-open or semi-closed or three quarters of the way open, but that's very hard to feel in reality. So I created the finger technique, which is a simple way to identify exactly how open your mouth should be for any of the vowel sounds in English. Here's how it works. For every vowel sound in English, you should be able to fit a certain amount of fingers between your teeth, which will enable you to feel how far open your mouth should be for a particular vowel sound in English. Let's imagine you currently find these two words very similar in English and hard to tell the difference between set and sat. We can use the finger technique to immediately clearly pronounce these words simply by working out how far our mouth should be for the e eh vowel sound in English and how far open our mouth should be for the a eh vowel sound in English. For the e eh vowel sound, as in set, there's enough space for one and a half fingers between our teeth, which means that if you put your finger between your teeth, put your teeth on it, that's space for one finger. If you open your mouth just a little bit more so there's space for one and a half fingers between your teeth, you get the perfect height for the e eh vowel sound. E, eh, e, eh, e. Eh. For the a vowel sound, however, in sat, you want enough space for two fingers in between your teeth. A, a, a. If I try to put two fingers between my teeth when I'm saying the e eh vowel sound in English, e, eh, e, eh, e, eh, they just won't go. So follow along with me and let's do this now. E, eh, a, e, eh, a, set, sat, set, sat, set, sat. Now I'm going to give you two more examples where you can apply the finger technique, but before I do that, I want to introduce you to the second technique that you can use to master any English vowel sound in 60 seconds or less, and that is the two second rule. I created the two second rule for my clients in my coaching program because many languages don't have long English vowel sounds, and English is a language that does. That means that when you're speaking English, if you're not used to having long English vowel sounds in English, when it comes to words like feet and fit or cart and cut, you might find those vowel sounds very, very similar because you're not used to pronouncing long vowel sounds with enough length in English. English has multiple different kinds of vowel sounds and three of the main ones are long vowel sounds, short vowel sounds and diphthongs. A diphthong is a combination of two vowel sounds where you start in the position of one vowel sound and end in the position of another vowel sound. You can apply the two second rule to both long vowel sounds and diphthongs in English. And here's how it works. For a short vowel sound in English, it will normally last the length of clicking your fingers like this. Let's take the two words feet and fit and apply the two second rule to these words to show you how to clearly and quickly and easily tell the difference between both words. For the word fit, which is a short English vowel sound, you want to pronounce the vowel sound for roughly the same length as it takes to click your fingers. I, 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 fit, fit, fit. Whereas for feet, it's a long English vowel sound. Now, the big 
difficulty that my clients have that don't have long vowel sounds in their native language is they normally think that they're pronouncing a long vowel sound long enough when in fact they're not. And because they are not used to having long vowel sounds, when they feel like they're completely over-exaggerating the length of a long English vowel sound, they're often only pronouncing it just long enough or not even long enough at all. So to help them to overcome this, I created the two second rule and we apply the two second rule to all of the long vowel sounds in English. Let's take the E vowel sound in the word feet. If we pronounce this vowel sound on its own, it's pronounced like this, E. If you're not used to doing that, what we want to do when we're practicing this vowel sound or any of the other long vowel sounds in English is we want to practice holding that vowel sound for two seconds. That enables you to get comfortable feeling the vowel sound with length so that you can then take that vowel sound and put it in words with length and keep it as a long English vowel sound. When you're speaking English in a natural conversation, you're obviously not going to hold a long vowel sound for two seconds. But the point is this, if you can't hold a long English vowel sound for two seconds when you're practicing, when you're speaking English in a natural conversation and everything speeds up, what's gonna happen is if you're only pronouncing it for say one second and then you speed up to normal speed, it's highly likely that that long English vowel sound is gonna be almost pronounced with the same length as a short vowel sound in English. And that's then why you might get asked to repeat yourself when you say the word feet or fit, because people won't be able to tell the difference. So follow along with me right now and let's take the E vowel sound. First of all, let's apply the finger technique to the E vowel sound. There is space for half a finger between your teeth when you make the E vowel sound. That means that you can't even squeeze one finger in between your teeth. E, E, E. I want you to follow along with me so you get the most from this tutorial and see exactly how to apply these techniques to the English vowel sounds you're struggling with. So for E, there's only space for half a finger between your teeth. E, whereas for the I vowel sound, fit, there's space for one finger in between your teeth. E, E, E. E, E. For E, if I try and push my finger in between my teeth, it just won't go because there's only space for half a finger. E, whereas for E, one finger will go. E, E, E. Now let's go back to E and apply the two second rule to it. E, E. Now, I can't stress the importance of applying the two second rule enough when you're practicing English. If you don't get used to exaggerating the length of long vowel sounds when you're practicing, when it comes to speaking English in a normal conversation, you're simply highly likely to speed those vowel sounds up and shorten them. And then they're gonna sound very similar and potentially confusing to your listener. And they're gonna sound like a short English vowel sound. So that's why the two second rule is so important in enabling you to pronounce your long vowel sounds clearly. So let's take this E vowel sound and put it into the word feed with the two second rule. Start by applying the finger technique, half a finger between the teeth. E, E, E. Now the two second rule, feed, feed. Now, if we take that back to feet and fit, what you might notice is that that E vowel sound in feet is a little bit shorter than it was when I said feed a moment ago. There's a very important reason for that called pre-fortis clipping, which you're going to learn about in the vowel sound checklist that I'm gonna talk about at the end of this video. But now let's apply these two techniques to two other very similar and confusing vowel sounds that non-native speakers often find challenging in English. We're going to look at the two long English vowel sounds, or and are, as in for and far. Because they're both long vowel sounds, we're going to practice these vowel sounds using the two second rule. We're also going to apply the finger technique to these two sounds, and for or, we're going to have enough space for one and a half fingers between our teeth. Or, or, or. For R, we're going to have enough space for two fingers between our teeth. R, R, R. So, follow along with me. First, let's do the vowel sounds. Then we'll put them into the words, then we'll summarize. Or, first of all, one and a half fingers between the teeth and with the two second rule. Oh, oh, oh. Now, in a word, four. Four, four. Now, R, space for two fingers, two second rule. 
啊啊啊 ！OK， now on a word. Fa fa fa. Now, before I get to the bonus tip and the vowel sound checklist, let's summarise. If you apply these two British accent method techniques to any vowel sound in English, you will immediately be able to correctly identify how far open your mouth should be for the vowel sound using the finger technique, and that'll stop many vowel sounds sounding too similar, like set and sat. Or caught and cart, and then if you apply the two-second rule to long vowel sounds compared to clicking your finger for a short vowel sound, that will immediately enable you to feel the difference between long vowel sounds and short vowel sounds, like cut and cart or feet and fit. Now, for the vowel sound checklist, the two techniques I have given you here will enable you to immediately identify how a vowel sound should feel and where it should come from. In the mouth, this will enable you to clearly pronounce any vowel sound in the English language in 60 seconds or less. Now, we don't just want to be able to clearly pronounce vowel sounds on their own in English. We want to be able to pronounce them like a native in words, and then also when we take those words and actually use those words in real English speaking. That's how you're going to stop getting asked to repeat yourself. And speak with true confidence, like a native. There are some additional elements that you want to be aware of when you're taking your now clear British vowel sounds and using them in words, and then when you're taking those words and actually using them in the English that you use every day in your work, in your social life, and maybe even in your dating life. So, in the vowel sound checklist, we go over a number of additional elements that can affect the pronunciation of vowel sounds when you're using them in words, and then when you're taking those words and actually using them in real English speech. These elements are vital if you want to be able to speak English with native English rhythm, and also if you want to be able to convey your meaning the most effectively. In English, by stressing the words are important in conveying the meaning of what you're saying, and also in the vowel sound checklist, we identify specific things about the position of the tongue and the position of the lips when we're making vowel sounds in English. Now, you can get your vowel sound checklist for free simply by going to the link below and downloading it. I believe that you deserve confidence like a native in English, and I'm here. Fighting to help you achieve it. These are the very tools and resources that I give to the professionals who are in my British Accent Method English Pronunciation Coaching Program. But I want you to speak English like a native and with the confidence like a native. Head to the link below, download the vowel sound checklist for free, and then if you apply the two techniques that we've gone through today with the vowel sound checklist, you will be able to almost immediately master any vowel sound in English, and that's going to enable you to stop getting asked to repeat yourself and speak English with the confidence. That you desire and deserve in English. Check out this video right here, where you're going to see why the length of that e vowel sound, where we applied the two-second rule, was shortened slightly in feet compared to the long word feet. Check this out now, and I'll see you here in just a second.